Went to replace the flapper on the flapper holder and the flush valve to clean off. Time for a little Kung Fu maintenance. Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance. Well, today I've got a fill valve that broke off inside and um, I'll show you here. Flush valve, not the fill valve, but I'll replace the fill valve as well. You can see it just clean broke off. Now, what happens sometimes is these tank additives, they're uh, kind of corrosive, especially if someone goes on vacation for a while and the toilet doesn't get flushed for a while or um, it's just a, a maybe a hall toilet that doesn't get used quite as often. It gets very uh, built up, you know, the, uh, the cleaner, the additive, and then it starts breaking things down, including the seals. Now I'm gonna be doing a complete rebuild today and gonna be replacing the flush valve. Here's the flush valve assembly. And also gonna be replacing the uh, fill valve, and pretty much just everything as I'm here. I already replaced the flapper yesterday and that's how this one snapped off uh, right here. Uh, it's fairly simple. Um, you only want to tighten these a half turn past tight and you also need to trim the fill tube to be about an inch below the, uh, the uh, tank valve lever. So those are kind of your main concerns on that. Uh, it's not too difficult. I've got my water turned off already. I'm going to be replacing the supply line and um, just kind of doing a rebuild while I'm here. So I got the new supply line, got a hacksaw to cut the deal, um, channel locks and vice grips. Vice grips really help the job go easier uh, for the tank to toilet bolts and uh, hacksaw sometimes is necessary if you have a, a bolt that uh, is just completely corroded on. Got some gloves. Tank to bowl gasket, tank to bowl bolts and gasket, whole set here. So anyway, can get it done. And I brought a new flush valve in case it's needed. Actually, this one looks fairly new, so I guess our lever's okay. This one's reverse threaded, is the only uh, little tricky part with the flush lever. But this one's actually okay. And just kind of, kind of get the flapper out of my way. This one's ready. Can actually go ahead and put it on the, the new flush valve here. Yay! Okay. Anyway, nothing too too major here. Kind of is what it is. Uh, a wet dry vacuum really will help to vacuum the water out. It makes it so much easier. So I'm gonna plug this in and get that done. Make a little noise. So we got that plugged in there, and here comes the noise. Maybe not. Okay. Okay. Okay, and I've got some rags at the ready, and, uh, and we can pull this apart and get it done. So here's my deal there. I'm going to go ahead and move the lid out of the way. Alright, so this is an old braided supply line 
uh, the old style. Uh, it's a 7 8 connection to the toilet tank and a 3 8 connect connection to the angle stop. Uh, sometimes these will fight you all the way. This one fought me right to the, to the very end. Had to take the old channel locks to it. And uh, even then, just kind of, you know, some of them go really easy, some of them not so much. Which uh, seems when the camera's rolling, that's uh, when it wants to give you the hardest time. <laughs> that is what it is. Anyway, again, it's a 7 8 inch connection to the tank and a 3 8 inch connection to this angle stop. Now, different places have different setups. Some, some of them are a half inch connection. Some of them seven eighths, but this is probably the most common size uh, for this. Sometimes you can reuse the old uh, supply lines, um, but I like the new braided connections. They're a little bit better. You just don't want to over tighten them. Like anything, you know, the right amount of force, the right amount of tightening is really what's going to make it best. So, you know, usually, most of the time these are easy, a couple, you know, 30 seconds and you're done, but sometimes you got one that'll fight you all the way, and that was one of them. Yep, so there's a broken flush valve tube, thing just snapped right off when I went to put a uh, new flapper on. So here um, we've got a two tank to toilet bolts. Uh, some tanks have three bolts. This particular one has two bolts. Uh, it's good to use a large size screwdriver. So I, I got a large one on my Leatherman. And vice grips can really help in that you can grab the bolt and it just makes it a little easier. Uh, turning it out. Most of the time you can't use the screwdriver inside. Most of the time you're going to have to turn your bolt out by hand. It, you'll just want to use the screwdriver to hold the bolt inside. It gets so corroded over the years of uh, you know it functioning that if you try to turn the bolt, and this one I did try to kind of turn it from inside but it just it kind of broke right, aw right away. So probably better just to turn it out by hand. you know, turning the bolt out. And uh, some bolts use a, a wing nut. It's kind of, wing nut's kind of cool because, you know, you, you got a little bit more that you can grab onto. And my six and one screwdriver actually has a, uh, you can pull the whole screwdriver inset part out and use it to turn the uh, wing nuts out. So it's pretty cool. And unfortunately my particular toilet tanks uh, it, the wing nut's a little bit too large, so I, I usually wind, wind up having to use the regular bolt, but, you know, some, some toilet tanks you can get away with it, and it's a pretty nice feature of the wing nuts, so. And sometimes the vice grips don't want to cooperate. It can be a little tricky. Just want to be careful for your tank. It is porcelain or and your bowl. Tank and bowl are porcelain. You know, you don't want to clamp it on where when you release the, the clamp of the vice grip that it's going to snap against the tank or against the bowl. Then uh, you can crack the porcelain and you'll be starting all over again. That's no fun. Not a bad idea to wear gloves when working with the stuff, um, the uh, tank to bowl, the gasket material. A lot of times will leave a, a lot of black residue on your hands and stuff. Not the easiest stuff to wash off. And it is a toilet, so, you know, but at least the tank is clean water. 
this is the bowl where it gets really scary and the, t and the Florida bowl bolts and the wax gasket and all that stuff it's where it's really nasty uh, here I'm just emptying out the leftover water that was in the tank most of it I got out with a wet dry vacuum but uh, there was a little bit more left this particular tank has some spacers some uh, gasket spacers I'm going to replace the uh, fill valve I show replacing the fill valve clearer in several other videos and then the flush tank the flush valve here it is removing it using some larger channel locks uh, just a reminder you want to make sure not to tighten the uh, new flush valve more than half a turn past tight it'll snap the plastic. Uh, you also don't want to use plumber's putty on any of these parts. You never want to use plumber's putty with anything plastic. The, the uh, oil or the, uh, the, the uh, what do you call it, the oil product of the putty can actually wear out plastic prematurely. So if you ever install uh, pop-up drains or anything like that that are plastic, you don't want to use plumber's putty. You use silicone instead. Um, a lot of things nowadays have gaskets that don't necessarily need a sealant, like plumber's putty or silicone. But plumber's putty is more used for metal to metal connection. You know, stainless steel to a, a, a stainless steel sink basket but you don't want to use it for anything plastic. You also don't want to use plumber's putty on cultured marble or anything porous like granite where the uh, color of the plumber's putty can actually bleed into the, into the material. Here I'm cutting down my flush fill tube, flush tube. As I explained earlier, you want this to sit about an inch below the flush lever. You don't want water seeping out of the flush lever that overfills too much. And you don't want to cut it too low either because that is uh, where you can adjust your flush, uh, your fill valve height. Your fill valve height is going to determine the amount of flush power, the amount of water that goes through. These are gravity feed toilet and uh, it's the amount of water that pushes through and drains through via gravity. So strength of your flush is going to be determined by the amount of water that is flushed when you flush. Uh, some of the newer toilets, the low flow toilets, they're engineered to use a lot less water, which is really cool. Um, they use, a lot of them use a bigger flapper these days. The Gerber toilets are starting to use bigger flapper that uh, gives a stronger flush with less water. It's a good idea. Here I'm replacing the fill valve, replacing the whole thing, it's just time, uh, especially with the additives that were there and um, it's a good idea. I show the whole fill valve replacement a lot clearer in a lot of other videos that I've showed it so many times that, uh, but this one I really wanted to show you guys how to replace the flush valve, but I kind of wound up rebuilding everything uh, at the same time it just made sense it being the what it needed the fill valve is just uh, hand tighten you really don't need any tools uh, on the new ones they've engineered the uh, the nut there so you can just tighten it by hand it's got a good sized wings on it so you can really grab it and twist it on so you really don't need channel locks or anything to tighten it on and you don't want to over tighten any of these uh, things in that it can crack the tank itself it is porcelain so porcelain is very strong but it's also brittle so here again with the flush valve 
you don't want to go more than half a turn past tight. And again, you also don't want to use plumber's putty as it'll wear through the plastic. And here's the gasket, tank to bowl gasket. You want to match it to the type of toilet that you have. And then once you put in your tank to bowl bolts and gaskets, uh, these are assembled. <clears throat> you want to alternate between each side so that you can get your tank nice and level. Some toilets use a, a nut in between uh, where it's connected to the tank. So some of them go the, uh, the bolt, then the washer, then the gasket. And then some use a nut on the other side with a, another washer and a gasket. This particular one uses the bolt, then the washer, then the gasket, and then on the opposite side uses a washer and the nut. And that's all that's really needed for this type. But some of them, like the Gerber toilets, tanks, there's a bolt in between. So, so the tank is actually just, you know, the bolt, then a, then a washer, gasket, and then on the other side of the tank is a bolt. And then on the other side of the bowl is a gasket, is a uh, washer and a nut. So there's a, I really don't like that setup particularly in that uh, you can't just replace the tank to bowl gaskets. You've got to actually separate the whole tank from the bowl before you can replace the tank to bowl bolts and gaskets. You know, it is what it is. It's a little more complicated, but not too bad. Either way, it's never fun when you need to replace tank to bowl gaskets and, you know, bolts. You got a leak in between the tank and uh, the uh, bowl. It's never fun, but, you know, job security is what it is. All that being said, one of my favorite toilets is the Gerber toilets. Uh, I like that they don't put a whole bunch of stickers on the tank and on the bowl. Some of the toilet companies are really bad about putting a ton of stickers everywhere and it just sucks after you and you know you do a nice install and then you've you got to try to remove all those stickers. A lot of them don't come off very well. You can even see on this toilet there's like you know 20 almost 30 year old stickers that are still on there you know because they put these stickers in in kind of like you know strange spots and they just did, don't come off that easy and so a lot of the installers will just leave them there and, and then they get you know 30 years of stuff getting splashed on them by accident and stuff like that just kind of you know just please manufacturers don't put a whole bunch of stickers on everything it drives me nuts uh, nuts are, are crazy crazy or yeah whatever Anyway, there's one of those stickers I was telling you about. Pretty gross, huh? And I'd probably remove it, but you know, by the time I do, it's probably gonna be time to change the toilet anyway, but you know, just uh, again, be nice if uh, companies wouldn't put so many stickers on the toilets. Just kinda unnecessary.
So again, using the uh, vice grips makes it a lot easier in that it can hold the bolt. Now, when you put in your brand new bolts, that's when you can turn the bolt from the top with a screwdriver. You know, a big flathead screwdriver works really good. And uh, holding it with the channel lock so you can get it tight enough. And you want to alternate between each side so that you can get your tank nice and level. It's no fun if you tighten up one side to realize you can't really tighten up the other side to get it level and it's just sitting crooked. So it's good to alternate each side. And if you have uh, two sets of vice grips that can be helpful and that you can clamp one on each side and that way you can switch back and forth, tighten it up, make it a little bit easier. Uh, this one I, I was using a pair of channel locks on the other side. Uh, not that easy to grab the nut with the channel locks but you know it's not impossible either. So. Here again, I needed my larger screwdriver. I have one on my Leatherman. Probably should get a regular larger screwdriver. Save some time on stuff like this, but sometimes the tools you have is the tools you have. You do, you do the best that you can, you know, understanding the different factors. Yep, they can't all be easy. Some of them will fight you all the way. So here's a braided style connection for the supply line. Again, it's a 7 8 inch uh, connection to the tank and then a 3 8 inch connection to the angle stop. Uh, angle stops, I really like the quarter turn angle stops. They're, they're really nice. Uh, been changing out a lot of them uh, as um, remodeling and uh, going with the quarter turn angle stop. It's a ball valve style. The ball valve is much less likely to wear out. It has less moving parts and, and uh, it, it's a you know, just a, a nice feature. So here on the uh, supply line, we just want to go a quarter turn past tight. You don't want to go too tight. And same with the connection to the tank. Just a quarter turn past tight is good. And you, even there, you could just hand tighten it and then leak test it rather than over tightening it. One of the main uh, mistakes kind of novice plumbers make is over tightening the connection. And because it's a plastic connection to the fill valve, if it's over tightened, they can crack the plastic and it, it can just be a surprise source of a leak. You know, all of a sudden one day it just snaps because it 
had been under so much tension because it was over tightened. So it's one of the big insurance things. There's actually some supply lines now that uh, when you tighten it on, it clicks when it's reached its, you know, tight enough uh, spot. They're a little bit, tiny bit more expensive, but, you know, it does prevent the over tightening situation and, and uh, flood situation. But, you know, as long as you just do no more than a quarter turn fast tight, you're good. Okay, so got it all tightened up and back together, ready to turn the water back on. And uh, then gonna do the, you know, test and flush and doing a field test. Uh, the field test is gonna show you a, a lot more if there's any leaking or any water, any moisture. And you can also look with flashlight, but uh, once you've dried it off with a you know, a little bit of paper is easier to dry it off with toilet paper because it's very absorbent. But then you can do a field test, make sure you don't have any leaks. Better to catch anything now. And you want to just feel at any of the connections points, you know, both from the supply line in between the, uh, just all the different connection points. Supply line, the nuts, the tank to bolt bolts and then watching in between the tank to bowl gasket making sure nothing's leaking there anyway good to go that's replacing the fill valve no big deal not the most fun job in the world but you know it is a job job security so no leaks here good to go thanks for watching kung fu maintenance over and out good to go and also making sure we get a good fill, uh, a good flush uh, that's based on the fill valve height. Again, that's adjustable. You can check out my videos on how to get the most flush power or how to improve the flush power for your toilet. I go into all of those things a little bit more on those videos, how to replace fill valves and flappers. And uh, Anyway, thanks for watching Kung Fu Maintenance. Over now.